In 1930, the most popular radio show in America was a show called Amos and Andy. And Amos and Andy was about two fellows that were always looking for a get-rich-quick scheme that they could make a fortune without having to work too hard. And, of course, in the best comedy tradition, it never quite happened that way. RKO made a motion picture that same year that starred the uh, Amos and Andy characters from the radio show, and that movie was called Check and Double Check. The title of the movie was apparently quite a popular catchphrase, and the movie made pretty good money for RKO. And in the American tradition, anytime something gets popular, everybody else wants to cash in on it. And so there was the game. Now, as I'm sure you recall, uh, the 1930s was kind of a depressing time in American history, so so to speak. Uh, There were a lot of people looking for an escape from reality and uh, looking for cheap ways to entertain themselves. Movies were a big part of that, but there were also vaudeville and music hall acts, a lot of amusement parks, a lot of daredevil type shows, circuses and such, to take people's mind off the fact that they weren't sure where their next meal was coming from. And board games were a big part of that, too, because it was a fairly cheap way to collect pieces of paper and cardboard and take a break from the real world. So a lot of the classics were created in the early 1930s. Games like Monopoly, Sorry, Easy Money, Anagrams, and many more. In 1930, a company called Clough Fabric Products got into the game business. As far as I can tell, it was their only game, but it was called Double Check that game was a four-player checker game. A pretty straightforward concept, and it's been done many, many times over the years. And according to the rules, it was a team game, so that you were playing with your partner on the other side of the board, and because you were a team, you could jump each other's pieces without capturing them and move into position to attack the other two players. Sounds like an interesting idea, but it didn't apparently catch on, and uh, the company never got out of the fabrics business, as far as I can see. But the game I really want to talk about in this video came from the Milton Bradley people, and that was Check, Double Check. And they cashed in on the movie and the catchphrase to uh, bring this product to the public. According to Milton Bradley's advertising, it was a game of action and thrill, developing unexpected situations and startling climaxes so rapidly that you are constantly on edge with suspense. The game is played with a deck of cards, which consists of cards with large numbers on them. Uh, They're numbered from 2 to 10. I do not have a complete deck. Uh, There's a few cards missing in here. But the uh, instructions say that for different numbers of players, you use different cards from the deck. So the full deck is for a four-player game. Uh, We'll just set up for a two-player game here for the sake of demonstration. And that means two sets of cards from the number 2 to the number 10. Plus, you've got four random cards that are drawn from the rest of the deck. So those are surprise numbers. You don't know what's going to happen, and they come up later in the game. And so you start out by dealing those cards, and they are just simply set face up on the table. So everybody knows what cards you have. Now, I don't have an original set of dice from the game. In that original set, the die doesn't have a six. None of the dice have a six. They have a check mark instead. And so what we're going to do is just pretend whenever we roll a six, it's a check mark. And I'll explain what that does in just a minute. So we'll let my opponent go first. We got all the cards laid out here on the table. There's their nine face up. Here's my nine face up. And let's just take some turns and I'll explain how it happens. So... My opponent rolls their dice. They have a six, which is a check mark, and they have a five. The five says that they can take their five card and put it in the discard pile. The six, the check, says that they must take a card from the discard pile and put it back in their tableau. So it's basically a wash for them at that point. So now it's my turn. 
I rolled a one and a five, which is six. I don't have any sixes, but my opponent does. So my opponent gets to put one of their sixes in the discard pile. Now the opponent goes, and there's a five, a one and a four. They have a five, so they put that five in the discard. I do not have a five, so I can't. Then it's my turn. I roll these dice, I roll the six. I don't have any sixes, but my opponent does. So my opponent puts their six in the discard pile. Back to their turn. Roll the seven. They don't have any sevens, but I do. So I can put my seven in the discard pile. My turn. I rolled a seven. I do have a seven. My opponent does not, so they don't get to put one away. Opponent's turn again. They rolled a five, and they have a five. So there you go. I do not have a five. So now it's my turn again. And I rolled a check, which means I have to take one back from the discard. But I also rolled a two, so I can put that two away. And that, my friend, is the entire game. Totally random. You just roll the dice, put the cards back, take the cards back, whatever, whatever. Those four extra cards that were over there, if at any time that uh, discard draw pile runs out, then you take a card from on the side there to add to your tableau. Now you'll notice that there's a bunch of little colored chips in this box here. The idea is that when a player runs out of uh, cards, then that ends the round. And you add up all the cards left over in everybody else's tableau, and you get a chip for that, for each one of them. And so you amass these chips, and then you shuffle all the cards up and do it again with another four random cards in, off to the side. When one player reaches 100 points, uh, they're the maximum loser, I guess. And then whoever has the fewest points at that stage of the game, then they are the winner. Uh, it seems like a long game. In fact, it says play to 200 points. Uh, it's a lot of die rolling. I don't really consider this a game per se. There's no choices being made whatsoever. The uh, set of cards are dealt randomly. The die rolls obviously are random. What cards you put back and take from the discard pile. It's more of an activity than a game. Uh, you don't have any choices to make. It might be fun for some people, but it just doesn't do it for me. This is not really intended to be a review, but obviously it's uh, coming out that way. It's a dumb game. I can see why we still don't play it today. You know, Some of those games from the 30s that uh, have lasted through the decades, uh, they had some spark of innovation involved in them, uh, good or bad, but they definitely caught on and uh, we still play the same games today. So you don't have to wonder why you've never heard of check, double check. Uh, there's just not much to it. So Milton Bradley, one of the giants of the gaming industry, doesn't always have a hit on their hands. And, uh, check and double check is definitely one of those. But even if you don't play check and double check, you know what I say. Be sure to play every day. <laughs>